Hi there, Michelle and Mike. When you unpack your clock, you're going to find it in these components. So you have the pendulum, key. I will have removed the mechanics. I decided to do that to prevent the weight of the mechanics causing you any damage en route. And of course the case. The mechanism will slip back into its housing, which is just here. And it has a bayonet action, so you've got a little groove here at 10 and one at two o'clock. And they correspond to a little pin just here and one just here. You can handle the mechanism quite easily. Just don't go putting your fingers, of course, inside or on anything that looks delicate. In other words, none of that. So, holding the mechanics by the outer rim. You can see there's a little screw at the bottom there. Just make sure that you slip over that, like so. And you can see there's a little dot there. And up at the top, slip it in, just so. I'm doing this one-handed with the camera, etc., so it might seem a little more awkward than it is. Let me pause. So, line up that little groove with the pin on both sides. And that's the 10 o'clock and two o'clock positions. Now, there'll be a little bit of a friction push. One second till I pause. So I just gave that a little snap into place, tiny little snap. So she's now, the mechanism is lying on that flange. You will now rotate the entire to lock those pins on those bayonet holes. So you might just see now, there's that pin and I just rotated it so that the pin is on the plate and not in the groove. Once that's done, you can see there's a locating position to go with the screw. So you revolve it again until you line up with the pin. And when you do, you'll use a small screwdriver and just pinch tighten that little screw into that pin hole. And that will be you located. On to the next step. So you can tighten that little screw just there, by using something like this, which is ju it's just a phase tester, small screwdriver, and you can pinch tighten that. Okay, once that's done, we'll remove the bell, that's just this one nut. Okay. Just like so. And your pendulum hangs from this spring here, which is quite delicate, so be very careful with it. And you can see the rod of the pendulum, that interacts with the clock just there. Okay, so you slide it up through that, and hook it onto the pendulum suspension. Okay. Now, we're going to move on to a thing called the beat. Once you've chosen the position of your clock, and we'll pretend that this is your table, that's what you're doing, make sure that you're steady, that there's no rock back and forward, that she's steady, and you might have to put something under a foot, a small bit of a paper or a card or something, just to take up any inconsistency in your table. Now, I'm going to mic it up now, and we're going to talk about the beat. So guys, I've just mic'd it up there so that you might hear that ticking. It's got to be a very even tick. Now, that tends to get adjusted or altered. If your table is a little different to mine, and say it's a bit more this way, it doesn't work. Now listen. It's lopsided. I'll lower that down again. 
So you can see that if your table or your fireplace is a little bit higher on one side than the other, it's going to alter the ticking of the clock, which con consequently um, might not allow it to run or run badly. Now, this device here allows for tracking. So if you, it's threaded and it'll move this fork to the right or to the left and that will change the ticking. So just to maladjust this, I'm going to turn this just for pig iron to clockwise. So I'm turning the knob towards me. And if I start that again, you can see that's not great. So if I turn the knob away from me now, which is actually an anti-clockwise turning, A little bit better, but a long way to go. Turn it again, and that's just tracking that. It's actually tracking it, let me see, away from me. Huh. A lot better. So you can see, I've tuned the sound to suit the tabletop using that device. Now once you've got that on and it's nicely on beat, you can put your bell back on. So just bell sits there, bell nut, let's make sure that the hammer is hitting it nicely. Okay. Next step. So, Michelle and Mike, winding. I supplied you with an original key, made in France, but at the same time, or near enough, 19th century of the clock. Make sure the key is in all the way. Revolve the key until it becomes stiff. Now, you're going to have to feel your way in this. Overwinding means a breakage. Underwinding means the clock will not run a full week, or it might go out of synchronization. That means the bell might strike a different hour to what the hands are saying. Now, you have got a drum there. And it's got a set of teeth like that. Now this is very big, it's just to give you an idea. And can you see all those damaged teeth there? That is from somebody overwinding where they get to a point of the spring where it can go no further and then you're inflicting yourself upon, upon the wheel. And inside that drum, you have a spring. Again, this is much bigger than yours, but it gives you an idea. That's a broken spring. And that's because the tail of it has been snapped off from extensive overwinding over a period of time. And you can see the size of that spring compared to your clock. It's, uh, this one's big, so it just goes to show what people can do. So, Wind cautiously. Wind it, you'll actually hear it starting to slow down as it, as it stiffens up. Now that's actually at a full wind already. Now, setting the hands, it's forward only. Move the minute hand only. Do not touch this hand at the moment at least. So track it like so. And just before the hour, there's a bit of a click and a whir and Something's happening, watch this. See that now? There you go. Let it count six if that six is the number and don't move on until it's finished. And say it's 10 past six, well then you can move on now till 10 past six. Or if you've got to go around to seven, come slowly up to the half hour because there's something happening inside. It's called the warning. Click it through the half hour, let it ring. And then We'll go on around to the hour. You can just see that turning there. And that, in this case, was about seven or eight minutes to the hour. You don't have to stop, but just be going through slowly. And then you'll get to here. Click, let it ring. Now, that's the setting of the hands, and forward only. Timekeeping is controlled by the pendulum. That means the length. So the longer the pendulum is, the slower a clock will go. So the lower, the slower. 
and it's governed, the height is governed by that screw there. Now if you turn that screw clockwise, that's going to lift the bob upwards and make it faster. But when you make adjustments, hold the main body steady like so with one hand and turn the nut to the right to make it faster or to the left to slow it down. Now the reason that you must hold that steady is because of that delicate spring at the top that the pendulum hangs from. See it there? Just here. We don't want to bend or twist that. If you find that the clock is not ringing the correct number of hours, that can happen in transit, it might just start to go off. What's happening is the hands lift this little button here by nature as they turn, but we're going to pop that upwards now. Just It pops in this direction, so it pivots that way. Now I've just moved that on to the next half hour position, and if I pop it out again, off it goes again. Okay, it rang eight, but it only says seven. We're way around that. Let's pop it up again and again. And just keep going until the bell rings the right hour. And that is how you resynchronize your clock. So now, with your clock running, reading the right time, I hope you have a great time with it. Service-wise, in two years' time, it should be oiled, just to replenish the oils. I tend to charge about 75 bucks here to do that, and I'm sure you'll get somebody locally to do it. It's a relatively simple job. And about every 10 years or so, a complete strip out and clean. And if you need, need a hand finding somebody, give me a shout, we'll find somebody for you, I'm sure. There's the NAWCC, that's the NAWCC, National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors in America. And they usually have somebody in your area. Have a great time with the clock. Ciao.